just so awesome. Thank, thank you, studio you audience. All. What thank a joy so it is much. to have you with us tonight. We have an exciting show for you. Oh, my goodness. This is the best of the best. Listen, we're going to be talking about the top ten. You know, we talk about the top ten baseball players, top ten football players, top ten singers, singers, top ten whatever. <laughs> but we talk about the top Ten. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about, as and first of all, I want to welcome all of those who are watching by way of yeah. television and my studio audience. Yeah. We're going to be dealing with marriage today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And today, men, I'm going to help you, and wives, I'm going to help you as well today as we talk about ten top failures that men fall into. Wow. Ten top wow. failures. That causes them to end up in divorce or causes them to lose out on their marriage. Wow. Men, I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you to measure. Today, I want you to measure yourself and see where you're at on the Richter scale. <laughs> wow. That's good. But, <laughs> hey, That's good. Listen, let me tell you something, men. Over 50% of marriages end in a divorce. That's, that's right. And I intend to do something about it. So I want to help you today in your marriage. And so I want you to identify with these 10 areas or see if they apply to your life. If they don't, wonderful. But this is what causes men to end up in divorce. These 10 top areas mm -hmm. that they cause their marriage to cease and desist because these 10 areas in their life, they don't master. And they don't see the warning signs. Wow. They don't see the warning signs that the wife is sending them, and they ignore those. And then next thing you know, they serve papers, and they wonder, what's this? Mm. And they've been served papers from the sheriff department. But I'm going to help you today. One of the first things that I want to tell you, men, listen to me. One of the first failures that we make as men is stop noticing our wives. Wow. Yep. That's the biggest mistake you can make. Stop noticing them. Stop paying them mm. attention, ignoring them, and not listening to them. And I'm telling you, you think you might be getting away with it, but I want you to know something. They're taking note of it. Yeah, right. Women need attention. They need to be loved. They need to be embraced. They need to know that they're important, that they're special. They need to know that you love them and that you care for them. And you have their best interests at heart. And the only way you're going to do that is pay them some attention. That's good. <laughs> and so often we ignore them, you know, for the football game, the basketball game. Oh, honey, uh, uh, shh, shh. I, I, or video games. I can't believe that one. But the video games. <laughs> Uh, and ignoring the wife and not giving her attention, and next thing you find yourself in divorce court and you want to know why. I want to encourage you today, to, if you are ignoring your wife, to put a stop to it. Put a stop to it today and start paying her some attention. As a matter of fact, have her join you on the couch now and say, baby, it's so good that you're here and embrace her and love on her. Make her feel special. Will you do that? That's very important. Rodella? Yeah. really good because from a woman's point of view she does need that attention and and it just takes something small it doesn't take a whole lot just to know that she's noticed when you come in the house you start taking her for granted because automatically it's she has to be in the kitchen cooking or she's washing or something that you have seen her do for so long that you think that's her job right and then you take you take her for granted if she sits down and she's tired, honey, could you get me something to drink? And all she wants to do is just to be, just to cuddle or for you to just yes. touch her. A wow. simple little, I love you, a simple little touch as you're walking by, a simple little hug, just because makes all the difference in the world. So if you stop noticing her, then in her head she's saying you're noticing something or someone else. Wow. Yeah. Good point, good yes. point. And we must keep our eyes, men, we got to keep our eyes focused on our wives. Yes. The second one that, oh, now listen to this, constantly rude towards them. Mm. Being rude towards them in front of folk, uh, acting disrespectful to them and being rude to them. That's number two. You'll find yourself mm. in divorce court as you are rude to your wife, 
constantly. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can make a mistake, and that's fine. But I'm talking about this constantly rude to them, disrespectful to, the, to them, mistreating them, mishandling them. You're going to find yourself mm -hmm. in divorce court. If you want your marriage to, to work, it's going to be very important that you honor her, you respect her, yeah. and never be rude to her, especially in front of others. Never embarrass your wife. So often, uh, we'll embarrass, and they'll tell you, Honey, you know you embarrassed me. I didn't mean to. Uh, honey, you embarrassed me. So what? Uh, honey, you embarrassed me. Well, you embarrassed me too. And we need to listen to them. That's one of the biggest problems that we have is so often we don't listen to our wives. I want to encourage you, you men who are watching right now, I want to encourage you to learn how to listen to your wife. And I know sometimes you feel like they're nagging. I know you feel like they get on your nerves. I understand that. I, I understand that. But it's all a part of ministering to them. Because as you minister to your wife, she can in turn minister to you. She can never minister to you as long as you don't minister to her. Keep in mind, she's the weaker vessel. See, so often we can think they're strong because they, they have a tendency to come across very strong in nature. Uh, the strong-willed woman or perhaps and so you can kind of uh, misread things and you can think that they're strong but in reality they're frail in reality they're the weaker vessel and you're the strong macho man you are the one who is there to encourage them to strengthen them to be there alongside to support them it's very very important that you support your wife yes I know what I'm talking about men listen to me well what about her supporting me she can never support you until you first support her. Amen. She's the weaker vessel. I'm telling you, listen to me. And as you support her, you will find her supporting you. As you stand with her, you will find her standing with you. As you encourage her, you will find her encouraging you because you're the leader. And she learns by example, by you. You are the priest of that home. You are the leader of that home. You are the man of that home. So it's up to you to lead, not her. You lead and show you love her, show you care for her, and never disrespect her, never be rude to her in front of people. Della? Yes. That is an excellent point because in public, it reflects your marriage, it reflects your relationship, it reflects what is actually either holding your marriage together or what's tearing it apart. And when you talk about disrespecting her in public, that does something, as a woman, I can imagine the embarrassment, what happens to her, and everyone's looking at her now, that, that man has disrespect her, mm. loud to her, said something, nasty and everyone's looking like oh my goodness what just happened and she's trying to hold it together now there's some women un unfortunately that will fight you right back oh, yeah. in public yes. oh, yeah. because they just have in their mind that they're, they're not going to take it there there's some that will not understand that let it go wait you get home and then handle it there's other women who will let it go until they get home and try and find out what's going on and then if it continues to happen, she knows that her marriage is falling apart because he's, you're constantly degrading her, Yes. constantly putting her down. What would make a man think that he could even do such a thing to the beautiful woman that he says he loves? Not only that, he's doing it to himself. Because That's true. The Word of God says you become one. Yes. So when you marry your wife, it's no longer two, it's one. Yes. So that's part of you. That's so you're going to abuse yourself? That's crazy. That to is. abuse yourself, <laughs> something that's part of you, that's, that's your rib that God mm -hmm. gave you. So you're to cherish mm -hmm. that. And if you love yourself, you'll love what belongs to you. You will love what God gave you. And you will cherish it. And you will take care of it. And that's what God is expecting you to do. Once he give you a wife, then you are to cherish her, love her, respect her, honor her, and realize she's a part of you. And you, it, it's hard to disrespect you, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I like that. I like what you just said about the rib. Because if she's that rib and you are disrespecting or degrading, you're fracturing. Mm. You're just fractured that rib. Wow. 
You Ooh. have just broken mm. a part That's of incredible. you. That's incredible. And the pain. Anybody ever have a cracked rib? You know what it feels like. <laughs> yes. You can barely breathe the pressure yeah. of that. So that rib is being fractured mm. constantly by the degrading of that man. So that's a good point. Wow. Not to do that. Right. And you know, the third uh, top uh, lesson that we can learn that men use against themselves is to tell their wife that uh, they're the boss, reminding them constantly that I'm the boss. Oh, wow. You know, hey, I, I'm the boss. I'm the, I'm, I'm the king of this castle. Wow. I'm the captain of this ship, you know, that kind of thing. Constantly reminding them that they're in charge. Do you know who I am? I'm, I, I'm the provider. I'm the breadwinner. And, and as if they don't know that. But when we're constantly reminding them that you're the boss, chances are maybe you might not be <laughs> the boss like you think, okay, if you got to constantly remind them. And don't, I'm not trying to disrespect you, sir. I'm just saying to you that when you know who you are and you know your position, then you don't have to feel threatened That's by right. who you are. That's right. Uh, you are a man. And because you are a man and, and created in the image and the likeness of God, the confidence level of who you are, you should feel good about yourself because you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. So never feel threatened by your wife and to, to remind her constantly that you're the boss, that you call the shots, it's my way, baby, or the highway, you're going to find yourself in the divorce court. You're going to find yourself, <laughs> you're going to find yourself being served papers. Submission is power. You know, the word of God says submit one to another. Yes. You know, so often we can say, I have uh, friends that tell me, say, you know what, my wife won't submit to me. And I say to them, well, you know, you can teach her submission by submitting. You can be, lead by example, yes, that's and, true. And, and they'll learn from you. But if you become dogmatic, arrogant, cocky, and everything, how are they going to learn submission when they don't know it? That's you right. have to teach your wife. Right. You're the trainer. You're the teacher. You're the leader. So you teach by example. You teach by humility. You don't teach by becoming arrogant and cocky and haughty towards them and mishandle them because they'll never minister to your need until you first minister to theirs. And you have to, as the leader, see, you are the stronger one. You are the leader. But you don't have to constantly remind her that you're the boss. You don't have to remind her that, hey, I pay the bills here. You don't have to constantly remind her is, hey, this is my house. You know, you don't have to constantly <laughs> remind uh, them of those different things. All you have to do is be who you are. Be a man. Be responsible. You know, Paul said it like this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. There comes a time when we grow up. And we have to take on responsibility. And we have to be reliable, dependable, and, and accountable. And so I want to encourage you to just be confident in yourself. Know that you are created in the image and the likeness of God, that God favor you, and God has an assignment, a purpose for you. And God will assist you in those areas. Sure but will. you never have to feel threatened and, and feel like that you have to constantly tell your wife that you're the boss. Okay, so I want to encourage you there. That's the third one. We're going to deal with all of them today. And I know this is going to be a pretty long show, but we're going to try to shorten it as much as we can for you. But I want you to get these 10 top failure lessons so that your life can have workability. Your marriage can have workability because it's easy to fall into the trap of these 10 areas because these are the top 10 areas that causes men to end up in divorce. And so I want to help you today because I want to see your marriage thrive and strive. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you make it. And in order to do that, there's some tools and there's some secrets and, and there's some things that we have to learn as men. And sometimes men are, can become uh, callous and cold and not, not sensitive to our wives. And so I want to encourage you today to be sensitive uh, to your wives. Bradella? Yes. Being able to understand the mystery of marriage. If a man doesn't understand that, he's going to have a difficult time understanding his own position. Mm -hmm. Even though the, the Word of God says the mystery is they become one. Mm 
Yes. She's well aware when she married him that she married a man. She's well aware when she married him that she married her provider, her protector. She married her friend. She married her confidant. She didn't have a problem with that. However, there has to be some form of intimidation that's coming from him that probably didn't start with her. Mm -hmm. Something triggered in him from her that he saw that made him see his past. And so now he's feeling that he has to uh, validate his place in the marriage. Yes. And that he doesn't have to do as long as she's there with him and she's supporting him and loving him. So there's no need for that. She'll well, validate him. Yeah, a lot of times men have uh, insecurity issues uh, because of the pressure that's faced, that they face. Uh, life has a tendency to put a lot of pressure, especially in the work uh, force where the, they have to submit to the boss and uh, they're on a job that they hate. I mean, they can't stand the boss, they can't stand the job. They dread every morning getting up, but they know they have to do that. Right. And so insecurities can develop in men. And so I want to encourage the wives, you, you wives, to encourage your husband. Right. You know, when he's going through, be there to encourage him. Be there to say, honey, it's going to be all right. Because he's out there facing all kind of demonic activity. Mm -hmm. Women probably throwing them, themselves at him. I don't know what's going on out there because I, I, it's been a long time. But, but I can imagine, I can imagine what that would be like going to the workforce and uh, things are falling apart at home and you, and you're upset with your wife and then all of a sudden uh, Miss Cutie Pie comes over and starts being nice to you and gets your attention. Next thing you know, uh, you and you got yourself in a, in a, in a fix. So I want to encourage the wives to make sure you guard against that by letting him know that you love him, that you have his best interest at heart, and you're supportive of him as well. But that's, no? that's right. That's right. If he's at a job that he doesn't like, then as the wife, I would say walk with him through that. And then if he feels that he can find another job or go to school and get some more education, Whatever he need to do, I believe she'll be there to support him right. and help him get through that. Right. Okay? Wonderful. Beautiful. Now, number four. Now, we're, we're moving right along. Are you getting anything out of this? I trust oh, you. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yes. Well, listen, um, these are top failures that men fall into. And so uh, the, the number four is this one, making the children the wife's sole responsibility. Mm. It's her, it's their, leaving it to her. You don't, you, don't, you don't deal with the kids, you don't chastise them, you don't give them any attention, you don't take them anywhere. She has to get them up, get them up in the morning. She got to get them ready for school. She got to fix their breakfast. She got to take them to the bus stop. Mm. Then a after she gets off work, she got to go to the bus stop and she got to pick them up. She got to take them home. Then she's got to feed them. She's got to uh, get them in the, uh, uh, get them to take a bath and she got to get them ready for bed. And then you won't take any responsibility at all. As a matter of fact, won't even take out the garbage. I remember a young man uh, that I was counseling with them, him, him and his wife. I won't mention his name because most of you may know him. But anyway, uh, the fact is, <laughs> When I was counseling with them, his wife was in the office and she said to me, she said, Pastor, he won't even take out the garbage. I mean, sorry, he was sorry. Just, just face it. And with all that responsibility on the wife, you don't want her to, you love your wife. You don't want her to have a, a nervous breakdown. You don't want her to fall apart. But all that responsibility is put on, on her. You can volunteer to help out around the house. You can vo volunteer to, to help with the kids. You can volunteer to take them to a game. Give her a break, for Christ's sake. Give her a break. Let her, let, her, let her go out with her girlfriends, her married girlfriends. You don't let her go. Tell her, say, honey, you ain't going out with no single girl. Because you go out there with them single girls, they start putting stuff in their heads, okay? But, but um, 
But uh, make sure she go out with married girl, uh, married girlfriends, and so they can talk about things that they can relate to. Because you get around single people, people single talk about single things. People who marry talk about married things. Okay, so but allow her some space and grace to be herself, to be free. Say, honey, it's fine. And then spend some time with the family where you take the whole entire family on a vacation. I mean, sometimes it might sound expensive, a vacation, but you can save money, put money away for a vacation, or just on the weekend, take a, a ride. Just ride up somewhere about 50 miles and turn around and come back. You know, but spend That's good. quality time. Yes. It's not the quantity of time that you spend. Quality. It's the quality of time that you spend with your family. And men, you, that's your responsibility to lead that. Say this weekend, uh, we're going to go to the movies together. And for God's sake, make sure you don't cancel it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Because you promised the kids, you know, I had a son. Well, I have a son. And uh, I never will forget it. I promised him that he called me. He said, Dad, he said, I need some batteries. And um, me and his mom, of course, were not together at the time. And um, he called me. He said, he said Dad, I need some batteries. I said, son, no problem. I'll send them to you. And do you know it was uh, almost two years before I sent that young man those batteries. And his mom said he went to the mailbox every day mm. looking for those batteries. Uh, and I just half-heartedly said, I'll send them to you, but didn't follow through. Broke his heart. Of course, today we got an awesome relationship. My son Donnie is just an awesome, extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've been there for him and uh, in his early age. And so... Um, and in his age of growing up even now. But my point is, if we make a commitment, let's honor our word. Yes, right. Men, yes. let's honor our word. If we, if we say we're going to do something, do it by all means. If you can't do it, then at least clean it up and apologize and say, hey, I'm sorry something came up. But don't just ignore it and don't just avoid it and say, oh, well, we'll go another time. No, say, I am so sorry. It slipped my mind and I'll make it up to you. You got to clean up your messes. Right. And you got to clean your mess up. If you make a mess, clean it up. And so I want to encourage you to, men to honor your word because if you honor your word, then they'll respect you. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you don't honor your word in one thing, they won't know if you'll honor it in something else. That's right. So what they'll have a tendency to do is wonder, well, if you didn't honor your word in that, what makes you think you're going to honor it in this? So you have to have a reputation of honoring your word. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to encourage you men that if, of course, there's things that you haven't honored your word, go to your wife right now and say, honey, you know, I, I promised you such and such, a, and I didn't, I didn't come through. I failed you, and I let you down, and I want you to forgive me. And embrace her and uh, ask her to forgive you. And then once your slate is wiped clean, you got a fresh start, then start committing yourself and make her the happiest wife that you can. Yeah. That's good. Children need their, their father. That is the strong role that they're looking at. That's a strong role that they need because they're looking at mom and how dad are getting along and realize that dad is the protector over mom, which makes him the protector over them. Yes. And so the children really, really need that dad in that house. They need that 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 man figure. They need that that authority, that voice. It's like when you're growing up and mom says, uh, I'm gonna wait till dad comes home. Everybody straighten up. No one acts up anymore because they know that that voice of authority, that voice of reason has come in the house and he's getting ready to correct things. So we, what we don't want to do is disappoint our kids, and dads really should take responsibility with the children. The mom didn't have those kids by herself. That's right. And that's something that there should, if he knew that he wasn't ready for children, and see, there's so mm -hmm. much uh, uh, not, uh, uh, so much lack of honesty in, in relationships when they get married. One may be ready for a child, one may not be. And so even though he may not say anything, he may not have been ready. She was ready. They have the children in his head. He's saying, well, you wanted it, <laughs> so you take care of it. Wow. That's cruel. That's yeah. cold. 
There yeah. should have been an agreement. There should have been a conversation. Right. There should have been communication. Because a lot of women aren't looking at it that way. What they're looking at is that he's not helping me with the children. But the question should be, did he want any? Mm, Was he good. ready for children? And, and I know that's the acid test that a, a mother has to take. Wow. Because she has to risk that hurt. She has to risk that pain in knowing that he might not have wanted wow. any children. He's not just ignoring those kids because he's coming home late and he's coming home tired. There's a reason for him n to keep his distance and stay away. And it may be that he wasn't ready for children. That, that is a good point. Now, what would, what would you do in a situation that... The, the husband was not expecting a child. And as a matter of fact, the family is not making it. Things are financially, they're just not making it. They're having it hard. And the wife comes to him and says, I'm pregnant. And he says, oh, no. Mm. We have to have an abortion. What do you think goes through that woman's head? And what goes in her heart to hear a husband say, let's kill our baby. And abortion clinics are at an all-time high. As you know, they're, they're growing uh, because husbands feel like that they can't take care of the child or perhaps even the mom feels like the flip side is that I done got pregnant. I can't tell him. I'm not going to tell him. I'm going to sneak off to an abortion clinic and abort the baby because we can't afford to have a child. What would you say, look in that camera and tell that couple what you think they should do? First of all, that's a, a very painful place to be if the man tells the wife that I don't want this child and I want you to abort it. Well, first of all, you just destroyed your marriage. Maybe or maybe not. I think that for the woman to want to have the child and the husband does not, I think that there's a destruction there. Well, sure, but it may not have, it may not destroy, it of, it of course will damage or it will. It's, it's yeah, it's just, heading, yeah, it's it's heading it, for right. destruction okay. because what she has just realized is that this baby is not only me, it's a part of you. Right. You're telling me to destroy it. You're telling me to kill it. And especially if they're believers, that is so against the word of God. Yes. Even in non-believers, they, they love the child. They don't want to abort. And so I would say that this is a time where counseling is needed. Absolutely. I knew you, you was going to say that. You have got to seek counsel. That's right. Because this baby is innocent. Right. We must always remember that any child that is conceived in the womb of a mother is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. It is a miracle. Yes. Because you, no man, no even the scientists even today, cannot even tell you how a fetus is born mm -hmm. from a fetus to an infant to a baby. They see it. They've watched it develop. They, they've seen the, the sperm go in the egg, and they've seen the uniting of it, but they still cannot understand that miracle, the mystery of it. And so this is a God-ordained thing. It doesn't matter where that child came from, how it came into that mother. It doesn't matter whether it was a rape. It doesn't matter how it happened. The thing is, is that that child is a miracle and a gift from God. That's right. And that's the very first thing that you have to look at. If the husband gets to that point where he says, I don't want a child, we're not ready for a child, it's time for counseling. Absolutely. Bottom line. That's very good. That's very good. That's good. So perhaps you're faced with a situation like that. I want to encourage you to reach out to someone. Don't just go through difficulties and pain and hurt mm. and make a decision without seeking godly counsel, seeking encouragement, seeking strength. I want to encourage you to do that. The Another reason why that uh, couples or, or men uh, end up in a divorce is uh, they disregard their domestic duties. They disregard doing anything in the house. They won't take out the garbage. They won't wash the dishes. That's, they won't even wash their own clothes. But listen, listen. Now, 
I understand you want the wife to wash the clothes. I understand that. But at least you can pick up behind yourself. <laughs> you know, the domestic duty, okay, of course the wife may wash the clothes. She may wash the dishes and she may vacuum. But at least you can do something around the house to help and support her. She's been taking care of the kids. She's been taking care of the responsibility of going to school and, and going talking to the counselors and doing everything as a parent should do. Going to PT, uh, what is that? Uh, PTA. What is that now? PTA. PTA, Parents, right. Teachers. Going to PTA. Mm -hmm. And then they say, Where, where's your husband? And, she, and she's got to lie for you and say you're working, knowing you're at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so she does all of this. At least you can clean up behind yourself. At least you can pick up behind yourself. At least you can do some things to honor her and help her in the house. But that's because you're going to find yourself in divorce court and you're going to find yourself without your wife if you just avoid those areas and put all of that responsibility on her and it's overwhelming to, uh, to her and she feels like I'm going to lose my mind. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go insane. I can't do this. I didn't sign up for this. I married you, but I did not marry you to put all of this responsibility on me, to have me take care of the kids, have me clean up the house, have me, you, you even want me to cut the grass, okay? You want me to do everything. I can't do this. And so I want to encourage men, make sure that you carry in your load. Make sure you're being responsible in assisting and helping out in the home because it's a lot, it's a lot in the home to do. I mean, when you talk about uh, vacuuming and you talk about dishwashing, you talk about cooking, that's a lot of responsibility for a woman, especially if they're holding a full-time job. Now, if they're a homemaker, hey, that's all good. Okay, a homemaker, that's what homemakers uh, do. And then you come in, and of course, it still assist because it's a lot of responsibility. But to work a full-time job and then come home and all that load is put on them, all that responsibility is put on them. All of those chores is put on them. With no assistance, you could actually make it fun for them. If you get in the kitchen sometime and just start saying, is there anything I could do? And they'll probably tell you, no, no, go, just go and sit down somewhere. <laughs> but just to know that you're willing to do it, just to know that you're an able body, or, or, or if you see the garbage need to be taken out, take the garbage. Or if you see the floor needs sweeping, uh, sweep the floor. If, if you see it needs vacuuming, go ahead and take the initiative to um, vacuum. So do some domestic duties yourself as a man. And I know we as men sometimes, hey, that ain't nothing. I ain't doing that. You know, I know we can take on that attitude. Been there, done that. But I was smart enough to realize before my marriage ended up in divorce court, before my wife said enough is enough, I was smart enough to begin to change and become very responsible in helping out at the home, realizing that this is a heavy load. But if you listen to them, and if you have a conversation and sit down and talk with them, they'll tell you everything you need to know. You don't have to worry about what your wife is thinking. You don't have to worry about what she's feeling. You don't even have to worry about what she's doing. She's going to tell you okay, <laughs> by her actions. So what I'm saying to you, sir, is that a lot of divorce, a lot of couples end up in divorce because of the responsibility that's put on them and the pressure, and we won't assist them. So I want to encourage you today to assist your wife, stand with her, help her in those endeavors, help her with the kids, help her around the house, and make sure that she's secure. Because listen, let me tell you something. We marry, our number one reason for marrying, just face it, uh, we marry for companionship. That's why we marry, number one. We want companionship. You know what I mean, sir? So in that companionship that we marry for, they don't marry for that. That's not their number one reason. The companionship is important. It's on the list, but it's not the top where it is with us. The top reason why they marry is for security, not necessarily money, but just to be secure, knowing that they got a man that loves them. They need to know that you love them. That's very, very key to the relationship. As long as they know you love them, they'll be secure. But if it's threatened by another woman, threatened by a job, threatened by 
uh, this and that. If something become more important, you got a problem. And you need to take a look at it real quickly. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you Journey to Greatness broadcast. If we're being a blessing to you, would you be so kind to consider going to our website and giving a generous gift so we can stay on the air? Go to fwccharlotte.com and click on Give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Thank you so very much and wish God's very best to you.